Hey, this is James from All Hail Internal Combustion. Today I'm checking my pistons over. Mainly I'm checking my connecting rods over. And I'm also going to check my bores for the mains in the block to uh, make sure nothing's out around or wonky. This engine did have a rod knock in it when we took it apart. It wasn't a heavy rod knock. It hadn't really beat itself to death, but you could definitely hear it. What I've seen go on a lot of times with connecting rods is if they get hammered too hard, the circle will go out of shape. So uh, what I'm doing on these, this is the last one that I'm doing now. Take them apart, scotch bright in here, make sure it's all nice and clean. Clean the surfaces off here, remove the oil, stuff like that. Put it back together. And now what I'm going to do is run the nuts down on it. And I'm going to put this thing and torque it. So that way I have the true shape that it's going to be in when it's all together before the bearings would go into it. I've already looked my numbers up for this particular engine. You need to do the same with whatever you're working on. They call for 19 to 22 foot-pounds of torque on the rod bolts. I've got my wrench set up to 20. I usually try and run around the middle when they give me a span like that. So I'm going to draw these down, torque them to 20. Now there's a lot of ways that you can go about measuring this. Um, the best way I find for out around is to get yourself, I think they call them snap gauges, telescopic gauges. What you want to do is you want to take this, put it in your rod. You'll feel when you're about centered in there. You also want to kind of float this head up in between both of your measuring surfaces because this has an arm on it that can throw your measurements off. The down and dirty easy way is to do it with just these snap gauges because you can get these relatively cheap and then you've always got them around. So I've got my number right there. We'll call this 12 o'clock. So I'm also going to want to check to see if it gets significantly different here at 2 o'clock. Or if it gets significantly different here at 10 o'clock. And I also like to check this way. Just to make sure I'm not completely out of round. Now, it feels a little bit looser in some spots. So what I've been doing is I've been going ahead and taking my measurements. And then I come down here to my outside micrometer. I'll put my telescope and gauge in there. And I'm actually pulling numbers in the four positions. And writing them down in a book so I can keep track of them. Um, I haven't measured this one yet, but, uh, they're all coming in close. These are the specs for it. And as far as the rod journals go, your outer round can be six ten thousandths maximum. I've only got one, which is my number one that came in at six ten thousandths. The rest of them are four, three, two. I think I even have one at one, which is extremely round. Yeah, I got a one, a three, and then another one, and whatever this one turns out to be. So I'm within spec on all my rods, so I know I don't have any problems with any of these being majorly out of round. So that's a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and take the last measurements I need off of number eight here. And set this one off to the side because I know I've checked all these. And then we'll go over to the block and we're going to put the main caps back on. And basically do the same thing. Before I get off to the mains, there's one more thing I wanted to say about the uh, rod journals here. One check you want to do just before you even start measuring. Feel where your two faces meet up. I mean, naturally, the one side's got the two little divots in it for the bearing to guide itself in. But if you feel any kind of a heavy lip here, you've got a problem. So, uh, all these check out good. Actually, the numbers on this last piston, or on this last connecting rod. Number eight. 
That is probably one of the roundest ones I've ever seen. All the numbers are the same. That one's perfectly round. And as you can see from the other ones, sorry about the light. But uh, these are all good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get these main caps back on, get everything cleaned up. We'll move on to there and double check to make sure nothing's out of round on that. Alright, so now we're on to our mains. <clears throat> I got all my main caps back on. They're all torqued down. These go to 65 foot-pounds, so that's what they're all set at. <clears throat> I cleaned the block half with Scotch-Brite and the cap with Scotch-Brite. Did that on all of them. Removed all the residue and old oil and everything else. Same thing on all these mating surfaces, so everything went back together clean. That means I got the proper torque going to anything because there's not anything getting in the way. I'm going to go through and you're going to want to check just like we did on our rods to make sure our caps are mating up good. You don't want any overhangs, any ridges or anything like that in here because it'll cause the bearings to sit funny. That could tighten up your crank, your bearing against your crank and cause you to wear a bearing out quicker. Now you can do your snap gauge trick on this and take it and measure it it's a little bit of a pain getting in here on the tight spots but you could pull it off i do have a dial bore gauge that i'm going to use on this one this makes it a lot easier because you don't have to sit there and take a measurement and play all those games so i've got it set right now so that it reads zero at the widest part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back out, spin it. Same. Spin it here. I don't know if you can see the gauge or not, but it comes up to zero and it's about half a thou difference. No big deal. Then the final number to check is over here, and that's about the same. So I'm going to go through and do all five of my main journals to make sure they're all round, basically. About half a thou. About half a thou. Go off of that one. About half a thou. So I'm going to keep on going. If you guys are doing your engine and you find anything that's like majorly off, you can get your engine line board where they basically shave a little bit of material off your cap, fold it back together, run a line board through it, and bring it all back into spec and make these round again. And a good machine shop is going to keep your center line of your cam and the center line of your crank the same so you don't have a sloppy timing set. But uh, that's basically it. And from the checks I've done so far, my rods are within spec. My mains are within spec. So I don't have any problems with metal being shifted or anything like that. And I can go ahead and finish this thing off. The next thing this needs to be is final hone to the size of the pistons that I have but that'll be for the next video these are just some quick and easy checks you can do to a block and if you're taking apart a running engine and rebearing it and freshening it all up this might not necessarily be necessary but this is cheap insurance just to make sure all the parts you're using are going back together because having to rebuild an engine twice really sucks and it's not cheap anymore so that's going to be it for checking over, doing preliminary checks before you start building. At least this is how we do it. And uh be more videos coming soon. All hail internal combustion. Like and subscribe. See y'all next time.